This Focus on Health segment is brought to you by Aurora Healthcare. Hello and welcome to Focus on Health. I'm Ted Stefaniak. Today we're at the Aurora Medical Center and we're going to be visiting the rehab department. We're going to be talking to Wendy Fabiziak. She's a speech therapist and we're going to be talking about vocal cord dysfunction. Well, Wendy, thanks for joining us today. Vocal cord dysfunction, now, I don't know if I've ever heard that term before. What, what are we talking about? A lot of people have not. Vocal cord dysfunction, or VCD, is a relatively new diagnosis that right now is my number one caseload here at Aurora. Uh, vocal cord dysfunction is uh, usually thought of as a breathing diagnosis, something that when people are having difficulty getting in a deep breath of air, but it is becoming more and more uh, prevalent. You'll see more and more of it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, would the symptoms be from an injury or is it almost like, a, like an asthma symptom? Or? Uh, good question. Uh, it can be from an injury. However, most often it's not really associated to be uh, uh, with an injury. It actually uh, probably would help if I kind of explain what it is first of all. Uh, vocal cord dysfunction and understanding it, you kind of need to understand uh, more about the larynx and what's happening in that. The larynx, the voice box, the Adam's apple, it's all situated uh, right there in the throat, uh, right about here and right in the middle of that voice box are our vocal cords. They're very, very small reed-like tissues that vibrate as air passes up through them to create sound, to create tone. Those little vocal cords are situated, situated right above the lungs and when those vocal cords are wide open, air is moving from the lungs freely, that's our respiration. When those vocal cords are vibrating very quickly, that creates the tone. Uh, when those vocal cords, when you're holding your breath, those vocal cords slam together tightly so air cannot be exchanged from the lungs out into the world. So in vocal cord dysfunction, rather than having those vocal cords wide open when we're just at rest and in respiration, those vocal cords are partly closed. About two thirds of the vocal cords are remaining closed, so the opening is quite small for air to move through. That basically sums up what is happening in vocal cord dysfunction. Okay, and with the term vocal cord dysfunction, people might be thinking it's your voice, but it, that's not nece necessarily how it's diagnosed. How do you diagnose this? Good question. Often it really isn't the voice. Some patients may have some hoarseness associated with it. Most often not though. Um, it's typically diagnosed by um, either an allergist or an ENT. Uh, they will do a number of different things. Ultimately, the final diagnosis comes from what we call laryngoscopy. Uh, laryngoscopy is when we take a small tube with a camera on the end, uh, very small, it's advanced through the nose, down into the back of the throat, it's relatively painless, and that we can then view down into those vocal cords to see what they're doing. We first try to provocate the vocal cords into an episode where they will have this shortness of breath. Um, however, a lot of kids, um, some of the elderly folks, that's a little invasive. So we're also able to pretty well diagnose it by spirometry where they do the breathing techniques or the breathing measures. If we see a very uh, jagged or flattened flow loop on their in, on their spirometry, that's also very indicative of vocal cord dysfunction. Yeah. Is there one group of the population that seems to be more prone to vocal cord dysfunction? Yeah, that's a really good question too. We have a lot of sort of groups of people. Athletes, um, girls, are seem to be the, the ones that experience this the most. Females are about 80 to 85 percent of the bulk of the population with VCD. Um, the athletes will often experience, because they're using inappropriate breathing techniques when they're out there on the court, when they're running, um, so I get a lot of athletes. Uh, we've been trying to get this out there for some of the trainers out there to help let their clients make them aware of this as, too, as well. Um, I see a lot of teachers also. Uh, teachers that uh, do a lot of talking, if they're using uh, incorrect breast support when they're talking, they seem to have this trouble as well. Hmm. So, so how do you treat something like that then? Um, typically the patients will come to see me. Uh, I will see them for maybe uh, anywhere from two to five treatment sessions to train them on the correct breathing strategies. Um, when you employ a certain number of techniques like um, 
using the diaphragm correctly, placing the air in the right manner, using an appropriate exhalatory pattern, that can improve this considerably. In fact, it can go to a point where we may have someone in here who will induce an attack by having them run. <laughs> they can't, in a matter of seconds, they will completely have that breath control controlled. Um, but this isn't just with athletes. I'll see people that just at rest sometimes feel like they just can't get in a deep breath of air. They'll tell me, I just feel like I can't pull it in. It feels too tight. And there is often a lot of tightness in the throat, the chest, and coughing often comes as well, as well with this because <coughs> they try to cough, the patient doesn't realize they're doing it, but to try and open those vocal cords back up to get the air in. Do, do you treat it at all with uh, any, any medications? Uh, we're trying to avoid that actually. We're finding that this has often been mis misdiagnosed as asthma, and these patients have often been given inhalers, but the inhalers really are not effective. And the patients will come back and say, I've been using this thing, but it really doesn't help that much. Uh, it, we're actually finding that this is irritating the vocal cords and sometimes even making it a little bit worse. So we try to control this, not with medications, but simply with the breathing strategies that are really fairly easy to catch on to and use and incorporate. Okay, well, if, if a person is having these symptoms and they're not sure what the problem is, how can we get a hold of you and, and find out more information? Uh, you can give us a call here uh, at, at Aurora. I'm in with the rehab department. Our number here at Aurora is 456 uh, 7100 in this department. However, you can also contact our main clinic line at 303-8700. Uh, we do need a doctor's referral in order for me to be able to treat the patient. However, like I said, once that doctor referral is received, we get them in here for an evaluation. I'm able to take some measurements of the vocal cords on my computer. And from there, we start with the breathing techniques and it's really pretty quick. So easily fixed. Okay, Wendy, thanks for taking some time with us today. My pleasure. If you have any questions about vocal cord dysfunction, speech therapy, or the rehab department, you can contact Aurora Medical Center at 920-303-8700. I'm Ted Stefaniak, and we'll see you next time on Focus on Health. This Focus on Health segment has been brought to you by Aurora Healthcare.